America. When people from other parts of the world think about the United States of America, the first thing that comes into their mind is opportunity. Back in the days when I would hear about America, I thought everyone was a celebrity. Skyscrapers, ingenious technology, people who have the opportunity to reach out to the best of their God-given potential. America was a land of opportunity. Everyone made it. Regardless of their circumstances, endless stories of miraculous undertaking. It's like America gave immortality. Breakthrough in the financial market. If anybody was sick, if they came to America, recovered from recession, they got here. A nation that leads a powerful military. But America is not all glamorous. They are. Challenges. Never in my life. They have been set back. I've seen beggars. Two million men. In America. Incarcerated in penitentiary. The worst parts of these lands. Their lives wasted. In the street. Unlikely to get a job. <laughs> um. My name is Blessing Nisanayo, and I am an 18-year-old senior who is on a mission to discover America. I think this all started back in the summer of 2013 when I got the opportunity to go to Nigeria, where I'm from. And you know, I can say this is, this is an opportunity that many Americans have never had, probably will never have. And I got the opportunity to do so, and I saw a different perspective from Nigeria that, that we expect here in America. You know, here in America, when you think of Africa, you think, you know, poverty, wildlife, you think, and civilization, you think, just a third world country. And that perception we have here, and when we actually go to these countries, they don't, they don't always match up. And I can say that Nigeria was not full of poverty. So I was shocked to see that this is what the media was actually, you know, feeding me and how incorrect it was. But more than that, more than the incorrect perception I had of this African countries, I saw the, the perception of America from Nigeria. And it was interesting because the way people regard America to be just heaven was, was amazing. Very, just, just amazing. And you know, we live in America know that you know America's not happy, but you know, outside of these America, of America, you know, people are actually thinking that America is the land of milk and honey. And when you come to America, that portends automatic, you know, success, and that's not the case. So this was very interesting to me to see how you know these two misconceptions can kind of go hand in hand. So upon my, my arrival back to the States, you know, I always felt it my responsibility to one day be able to hear the stories of those who have come here, you know, first-hand experiences. And I found a very interesting story. Um, his name is Mr. Fountain Silicon. And his story is, is different. It is very different. It's very interesting. And he agreed to sit down with me and share the story with me, not only me, but you know, to the camera as well. And we just started from, you know, what he did back home, why he came, you know, what he met here, and that's how we just went through the story. So um, I hope you enjoy uh, this piece of the promised land. Uh, my name is Fontaine Vosilikwa, and uh, I'm from Congo. And uh, I've been in the United States since uh, 1989. So, if I have to tell you about the story, about my life in the U.S., I may have to start first the way I grew up, you know. Back home, 
I was, like I said, a wealthy child. Meaning that in my family, we, we was a family of ten, and uh, my daddy, my father, passed away back in 1993. But before that, he had some good, good function back home. What was he? My daddy first, he was a diplomat, so means that uh, he was an ambassador, and we, we traveled a lot from my country to European country, African countries. And then when um, he retired from politics, he became the CEO representative in Congo from the Pepsi Cola. I don't know if you know about the Pepsi Cola. Mm -hmm. Then after that, for I think for the two years of the function, he became the director administrator administrator of um, an agency travel agency back home. They call Ajetraf. Then he became the chairman of the SNCZ back then, mean the, the, uh, that was the company who was taking care of the railroad in my country. So your family was wealthy? Oh yeah, we were wealthy. So How wealthy? Mean, big, big wealthy. It means that, like myself, by my young age, till I grew up, okay, I was not just wash dishes. I have made in my house. I never did my laundry, but they were doing it for me until I become like that. Almost 19 or 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So not only me, all my family members. So and we really have a good life. It means that uh, hey, my family when they heard my name, my last name, hey man, it means that. Talk about somebody. You know that. Let, let, let me tell you something. You know, in the United States, when we talk about the police, I'm just talking about the law, just to be give you a good story about the law. For instance, you know, when you talk about the police over here, you know they have the law. But back then in my country, policemen, whoever they where you are, they, they cannot stop. They can put yeah, they might be pull me over, like they always say, but. When I say my name, just my name, the committee chief, I don't know why, but they got just come to you, I greet daddy for me, yeah, that's it, just, just to let you know how wealthy we were. So your wealth came with power? Power. Mm -hmm. yes. that, uh, I just, can, like I said, uh, back home, the, 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 everything was very, 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 very fine. We start heard about the United States, and we start looking on the movies, the news, on TV. Oh, America is how wonderful America is, and everybody start dreaming about America. And we start saying, "Oh, in Africa we already like this." You know, I have a good life, and oh, what's gonna happen when I go there? Oh, I'm gonna be just like a super, super king. Back home, was you, you lived a good life? Oh yes. I have a good life. I mean that, uh, hey, you know. I I just I'm proud to say that because my parents, you know, raised me well. I didn't I didn't like anything. We went to the nice schools back home. We traveled a lot, and I learned a lot. You know, we was very very wealthy. Means that you know, people envy us. Mm -hmm. But you didn't feel it because, hey, you have a good life, you know, you look at people and you put in the money, everybody have the same life to you. But you always find out that you're kind of superior because whatever you talk about, they always listen. Mm. Whatever decision I can tell them, I say, okay, today we're not going to go do this. Everybody's going to listen to you. But you know, I was young, I didn't see it as a, like you say, as a power. But when I start growing up and you know respect, even when you go places, you go places, you offices, you go out, just you say your name, Fountain Boss, you go, ah, oh, you're the son of the ambassador. Oh, what was that? Oh, what? oh, yes, that, you know, something like that. Hmm. Uh, people here in America through different means, um, obviously through word of mouth, but more importantly through media, uh, news like BBC, um, CNN. Um, popular TV shows, but more importantly, the internet. Nowadays, the internet has played a big part of this because people can see popular um, 
places like maybe New York, for example, and they see these big cities, these big buildings, these, these big cars, and they're deceived by the idea that this is what all of America is like. And when they think that this is America in its entirety, America starts to, to mentally, they think of America as a fantasy. It becomes a, a land of their dreams where they have to go. Well, we knew that America was one of the two superpowers at that period in time. America has always been um, a country respected by all. Mm -hmm. One of the things we heard about America, we want to see the big cars. We, we knew that it was a land of skyscrapers. The, yeah. A land full of milk and honey. We were actually given the opportunity to see the streets of America. We had heard about New York. Uh, we had the opportunity to see um, the industrialized America. Oh, like every little kid that grew up, you know, America has this huge image. And, uh, and we had been privileged to watch some of their um, television programs. Uh, I am sure everybody watch TV. We watch the news. The free America where you can do whatever you want, where there's uh, freedom of speech. Uh, which I think we don't really enjoy in our country at that time. So we've kind of like found this a solid place, a place of refuge. And so uh, all of those formed a, uh, a clear picture of this country and uh, that it was an advanced nation. Mm -hmm. That make us so happy and we, we just go into form. You want to see America, you know, so naturally too I wanted to see America. And that uh, a nation that many people aspire to either visit or go to school there or Probably live there. Everybody want to come because it, it doesn't matter whether you said the economy is bad or unemployment in the United States is 6.5 or 7.5. People don't care. Just get me into the United States. The interesting thing is, you know, regardless of rank or class or who you are and what your position is on society's ladder, everyone is deceived by this notion that America is the promised land. This becomes dangerous because people come to America with nothing but expect everything.